Hi there, church. I'm Yolanta, and I get to help out with missions, Alpha, and Young Adult Small Group here at the Sheffield campus. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue to delve deeper and look at some of the most poignant Bible verses together. So we know that Jesus is not a distant God, and if we reflect on that, we realize we've been made for something so beautiful, close, and intimate, which is communion with him, whereby our purpose is actually fulfilled. In the book, Songs of Solomon, 412, we read, You are a garden locked up, my sister, my bride. You're a spring enclosed, a sealed fountain. This can be seen as God delighting in having moments with you where he can minister his grace to you. And this actually refreshes him. We love God because he first loved us. And we can't even begin to try and love God without first catching that revelation of his adoring love for us, which eventually overflows out from us to others. In John 14, 10, it reads, And on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Now that's taken years to digest and will continue taking so many years to digest and to bring up new revelation. But that is what reminds me that we were made for communion without which we cannot even endure existence. In Jesus, that very hunger of our souls to be reconciled with the Spirit of God, the creator of the cosmos, our Father, is found in forgiveness and his atonement by his blood of our sins, by which that barrier of condemnation is eradicated. This is simply an ocean of grace that we will spend all eternity trying to comprehend. And so far with our finite minds, we've only just barely dipped our toes in. In him is also satisfied that base human desire that we all have, which is to belong and to be fully known and accepted and unconditionally loved. I've come to realize that Jesus is the answer and source to absolutely everything we're trying to look for within ourselves and others. We were made with the desire to be like him. And when we finally come to the end of ourselves and stop looking within ourselves to be the supplier of all our needs, the source of life, we can finally receive him. And that is where all those desires to be holy, righteous and pure are satisfied by him dwelling in us, the temple of God, the vessel, the conduit of his grace. And in him dwelling in us, as John writes, that's where we experience all of that self-consciousness being dissolved and rest in discovering a new focal point of Christ consciousness, where we're solely conscious of experiencing an awareness of his unfathomable love for us. That kind of love where sin is remembered no more, as it says in Hebrews, and our condemnation and guilt is buried. And anything that once was that barrier and separation from his holiness and righteousness, disqualifying us from communion with him, it gets removed as we are clothed and dressed in his righteousness and we receive it by faith as father abraham did now we can be one with god i in him him in me we're shielded from the arrows of the enemy because our identity in life is hidden in him as it says in colossians 3 3 for you died and your life is now hidden in christ for this purpose we were created total communion with god and we're created into a brand new being to identify with his righteousness, holiness, purity, love, joy, peace, because he identified with all our sin, condemnation, guilt, shame, and even death. And that is how we can receive and connect to Jesus, our eternal life, who dwells and bears his fruit in us by the Spirit. So I hope that fills you with joy, peace, and love. Thank you for journeying with me through this devotional, praying the blessing over you all.